Morning everybody, it's Andy from SA Survival. It's a balmy minus six today. And today I just want to go over a couple of uh, gadgets and gadgets today from uh, what I received for Christmas and stuff that I've had for a while. Uh, also some gear from camogroup.ca and they sent over for testing. And to be really honest with you, I apologize guys for not getting around to do these earlier. I've been a bit lazy and we've also been really busy. Uh, so getting time to do some videos uh, sort of was put on the back burner, but now I've got the urge to go back out and do some more videos. And uh, I apologize for that, but today it's time to get on with some of those gear reviews and have a look at what uh, is good and some pros and cons against all of that. So a quick overview of what we will be looking at today is the Nadoir survival kit in a can, an adapter to go on to a different style fuel bottle so that you can put your stove on, uh, nights or nights lights I believe they're called, uh, s beaners. We have some ties, so these are guy line adjusters for your tops. A super fuel lighter this one's interesting I'm gonna hold that out there for you see if you can guess what that might be again some adjusting ropes uh, by night lights again different things to do um, these ties plastic coated ties which are very handy a bag this took a bit of thinking to what we could do with this, with a simunition mask bag, and uh, I came up with a few ideas, what uses you could use with this, and also a new gift for Christmas as well, a down blanket. So guys, let's have a look and figure out what it is that all this stuff has, and uh, where they lie within our uh, outdoors, our adventuring, overlanding, and camping. These s beaners they come in many different shapes and sizes, down to the little tiny ones, to big ones that are innovative and they've got bottle openers involved. They do have a locking finger on the side, okay? Spring gates, which means you can join things together or add things to backpacks, like water bottles. Uh, one thing I thought about with this one is zippers. Let's just use this zipper for instance on the softy jacket. When I got my mittens on in this weather, I kind of found it hard to find the zipper. If I add it to the zipper, I've now got a handhold to grab that with my mitts on. Normally I've got like a woolen pair of mitts on, then I have my rain mitts on or my Gore-Tex mitts over the top for wind protection. And I'm very clumsy with those fingers and thumbs. So now what I can do, I can feel for this s beaner and I can pull it up. I also have an emergency carabiner or whatever I want to put on there. Adding a whistle to the S-Beaner and then adding to the zipper now gives me a whistle close by if ever I need to and also again adds a little bit more when I'm wearing my mitts something to grip onto. So great ideas to add things to wherever. Very simple to take off and now I can attach it to maybe my fleece lay it off because I've got too warm I can do it the same thing connected to my zipper of my fleece Bob's your uncle as I said before I'm wearing my softy jacket I wanted to try it out I'm also wearing the fleece which does have pit zips on it and you can see how small these pit zips are and if I added an s beaner to these, or one of them, I'll be able to unzip and zip it up quite easily. The rest of it has one main pocket on the front with a deep pocket, put your notepad in or a cell phone, and a pen holder. Other than that, it's a high collar fleece. It works great as a layering system. So in conjunction with the softy jacket, Toasty warm. Ideal. One other thing I want to show you, mucklucks. What are mucklucks? 
Mucklucks are winter boots. Uh, they are shelled, so that means there's an outer skin, and then they have an inner skin as well. The inner skin is a wool felt uh, sock, double lined, and then you have your outer skin, which is a canvas boot with a rubber welt. I'll take one off and I'll show you what they are and why they work. This is a mucklock. Long laces, three hoops at the front, a gather point at the top, a rubber welt around the bottom, the heel, and the toe, and a sort of a canvasy nylon um, mix material on the sides. They repel water, they are not resistant or proof, which means, as I found out firsthand on Lightning Lakes in Manning Park when I broke through the ice and I went to about this deep in water, the sock inside got wet, the boot did not repel the water and it took me over 24 hours to dry this system out by a fire. The sole. It's a knurled sole which on ice is still slippery but the rubber does not go rock hard like a hockey puck at sub-zero de uh, degrees. In soft snow, powder snow, wet snow it works fantastically even though it doesn't look much as the way of a grip. What is inside? A felt wool sock. Now this is, I said was two pieces. To air them and dry them you just pull them apart. Like so. And they are stitched right in the middle and they look kind of funny. Where was the toque? Here must. Um, but double lined, fairly thick and they keep you super warm. I just came back from a weekend away uh, for New Year's and I wore these all weekend. Absolutely phenomenal. I wouldn't go anywhere else with them in the winter um, because we were down to about minus 10 at night and it was really cold on the feet. So I ditched the hiking boots, I went to the mucklucks and stayed warm all weekend. Again, it's all about the layering system. How do we put these things on? A couple of ways. You can put the, if your feet are tight or you've got two pairs of socks on, sometimes you can't get your foot inside of this liner when you put the boot on. What do I do? First thing, I put the sock on. You see it's not very high then I slip it straight into the boot and do it up very comfortable but what else is neat inside of these boots not just the felt sock is you get a, a insole that goes in them as well now also with this insole there can be, depends on if somebody's checked them as a surplus item, a felt pad as well. The felt pad. And this adds extra insulation to the boot. Especially taking you down to that minus 30 degrees, which is going to be phenomenal. Uh, minus 10 this weekend uh, with the wind chill. Never had a problem. My feet were toasty warm all weekend. So totally believe in the mucklock system. Yes, you could get Sorel's. Uh, you know, $100 plus, uh, a little bit more waterproof up to here, but these things are designed to go sub-zero, minus 30 degrees. A little bit on the heavy side, but, you know, comfortable. I think I'd rather take the little added weight and keep my feet warm. Uh, you can wear them with snowshoes. They are designed to go onto snowshoes. So if you're losing traction, then obviously put your snowshoe on, use the cleats in the snowshoes, you can walk for a lot longer and further and you won't break through the ice with your snowshoes on. So 
definitely a must buy if you're going to go outside hiking and you're doing a lot of tenting even if you've got your stove pipe in your tent or whatever phenomenal pieces of kit take the liners out again you can wear these liners if they're not damp in bed nice in your hammock uh, in your tent in your sleeping bag leave them on or pull them out put them inside of your sleeping bag keep them warm for the morning tuck your laces inside because these do get wet from the snow and they do freeze roll them down and put these somewhere dry out of the way of the wind so that you can put them on in the morning again they're just a shell boot okay with an insulating pad now they are thick soled uh, about a half an inch thick of rubber so again insulating you from the cold outside now, how to do them up all you have to do since the three loops I just go through two times just to stop it from slipping cinch them down and like a moccasin go around I tie off at the back Tie the front end to stop the snow from going down into the boot. And there you have a great pair of mucklucks. So yes, we're in the softy jacket. Absolutely brilliant piece of kit. Folds down to next to nothing, in fact, it folds down to about this size. I've shown you that in my previous video and it's soft. It is compactable and it doesn't take up a lot of weight or space. So a bonus, doubly bonus is for layering. Again, we just showed you the fleece. Put the softy jacket on top with the mandarin collar. Do it all up with the cinch cord at the back, draw it in, keep all that heat in, toasty warm. What else have we got? I said we have this bag. I got given this bag. Again, a lot of this stuff came from Camo Group to have a look and see what we could do with it. It is a training for the real world FX protective mask. And it's just a bag and it has a zipper in it that you can put stuff on the sort of on the outside if you like and I was like what am I going to do with this bag I don't really know what uses it could have until I was thinking about it camping the other day and I was using the open fire to cook on and I'm thinking dirty pots my mug my uh, billy can set so what have I done I got my big one and a half liter pot in here Albeit that it does have its uh, cozy on there, but I can put it in this bag and I can keep it all together. Not only can I put my pot in there with my stove inside, I can use the zipper right here to put my fire starting equipment in there as well. My lighter, um, my um, fuel, my kindling, my wax balls, um, stuff like that that I might be put into separate pouches stick it in here matches as well I can pull this out and I can start my fire with my cook set in one piece so give it a quick wash before you buy it put all your camp cookware in there even if you've got a billy set I've got a, uh, a set of three or four pots with a kettle inside that's perfect I cook on the open fire I cook on a stove put it in one of these bags I keep it all together I did end up losing the um, the bag that the kit came with, so now it was all loose and rattling around and the pot gripper was floating around and I had nowhere to store all this stuff, but this bag came in handy and it, I've used it a couple of times, it's perfect, uh, ideal for doing everything you need for your pot kit. Once it's in, whether it's got a cozy on or not, all that dirt, the carbon from the fire is going to stay inside. And it's got a draw cord, great idea, perfect bit of kit didn't think of it for a while it's fantastic and I think Sandra might even have another idea in one of her videos on what to do with this bag and I thought it was a great idea so keep tuned stay tuned for that and we'll show you that one a 
super fuel lighter by accident when we were kicking around uh, earlier on in the fall somebody had left one of these lighters in the field and I didn't think much of it I picked it up I realized it's basically a storm lighter and I went to find another one just in case I lost it it is re it is refillable dust cover and a single ignition Okay, it does not blow out, it's like jet, and I got this one from the dollar store. This one, two and a half bucks, can't be bad. I did say dollar store, but they always have a couple of things that are, you know, overpriced. And for three dollars, I've been using this to light our fires, uh, because we take our own wood with us and we use paper. Um, and yeah, this thing starts fires all the time. So I keep one in the car and we keep one in the trailer now and it's perfect so a super fuel lighter i'm sure there's loads of reviews on different lighters out there this is just a cheap recommendation for me it was a stocking stuffer i thought it was great now this gadget is kind of interesting it looks like a miniature flask but when you look a bit closer on the edge here there is a fire steel and I was intrigued, I was like, okay, this is kind of an interesting thing. A little lanyard, you can spin so it doesn't get tangled up. You can put it on your pack, uh, in a pocket. But what's inside, and it is like a flask, it has an O-ring on the top, and it has a steel, and also a wick. So this, with a bit of fuel in here, methyl hydrate, methylated spirits, you can use this as a fire starter. So now, instead of just having a flint and steel, you can actually hold this next to a candle, light your candle. Even if you've got paper, old man's beard, lichen, you can put this next to it and just hold it rather than try and rely on sparks. So this bit of kit is actually, put your finger over it, over the valve, because obviously you don't want any fuel coming out. You give it a quick spark. and the, the wick lights up. I'm hoping you can see that. Then you can go and do whatever you need because there's wick inside of that steel tube. So inside of this tube, the wick goes inside and you can burn that fuel. Now, again. If you think you've run out of fuel, you dip it. And you light it again and it's all lit so it's a pretty good bit of kit i didn't think much of this either and i'm loving it it's brilliant pocket size i was thinking how much fuel do i need and i put it in the downside to this one is is getting the fuel in you need a small funnel so if you do have a flask a hip flask and some of those funnels there uh, they do fit but you have to be careful on it. Fill it up, but you don't need a lot of this fuel. You're not cooking anything with this fuel. All you're doing is using it as a wick uh, soaker, and from there, lighting your fire. So again, it's lit. Let's just see how long it lasts. Okay, so there's a bit of wind, as you can see. It's still working, and then it's out. So it's, there's enough time in here to light what you need, a candle for sure. Now you don't want to let your wick get dry too often and uh, burn because then you'll have no wick. But a great dipping solution. So it's a miniature flask with methyl hydrate, a ferrocean rod, a striker inside, a wick on the end, absolutely fantastic great stocking stuffers i know christmas has just ended birthday presents people like to go camping they're after new gadgets and gadgets and this one definitely up there with that light this one's just for paper and just quick and convenience yes easiness this can light my stove this can light my fire this is absolutely fantastic so have a check them out see where you can get them from for sure Camogroup.ca has this and uh, it works brilliantly. Nightlight.
cord tightener. Eight feet of cord, and on the end, two carabiners with boat cleats. So all you do is there is a cam there, and you just pull it through, and you lock it off, and it holds it tight. Now this part was interesting because it doesn't really show how to undo it, and you're thinking that you have to move the cam lock up by thumb, but crazy me, took a little while to figure it out. Pull it out, loosen it off, pull it back in, simple pull, tight. These are going to be so handy, especially for the roof of the car. I'm going to put my um, shovel, my axe, my fuel uh, can up there, my water cans. I'm going to buy another set of these because two of them would be perfect. Eight feet gives you plenty of uh, length. Cinch them down. A very quick slippery half hitch on the end. And that is all that you need to stop that thing from coming undone. Very simply, pull on the tug on the loose end, pull it up, and release. Again, these were all gifts for Christmas this year. Brilliant bit of kit. And it even comes with a little instruction buckler on how or different methods of tying off if you've got, you know, rods and if you've got hooks and this, that and the other. Another bit of kit, awesome. Gear tight, twistable organizers. And these are great as well because they come in various different sizes and with this you can strap things down very quickly. Okay, you don't have to fumble around. It's just like a normal twist tie that you get for sandwich bags. Just twist it up, it's all done. That's it. I like these for the car because I carry about a litre and a half, or, sorry, about four litres of water in there um, just for when I'm travelling. So I've always got some water in the car for any emergency. And I just put this down one of my tie downs in the car and I just quickly give it a quick twist. Perfect. Now these can be for anything. Maybe you've got a problem when you're out camping and you need to fix something. Gear ties. They come in various sizes. These are long ones. You can get them right down to about, about an inch and a half. Awesome bits of kit. You know, just got to think what you want to do with them. It even shows you here, make a hook, hang your lantern. You can tie all your cords together, um, stuff like this. On the back of this one, it's got, not sure if you'll be able to see that one. It's got a picture of an ATV or a silhouette of an ATV and they've got the shovel on the front. So just use them to tie anything down. Quick, simple, super easy. No name brand. Now this was quite exciting to get. Didn't expect it. Again, I can crush it down even more. And this is a down blanket. Probably about three feet by three and a half feet. It has a reflective side to it and a matte side to it. So you can put the reflective side towards the body or if you want to reflect any cold, put it on the outside. This is going to be great for a blanket within the trailer just to wrap around me, sitting around the campfire. Similar to ranger blankets or um, poncho liners as they call them, same idea. They're down filled. It's amazing how warm this thing is. Put it over the blanket, tuck it in, stay warm. I can already feel the heat coming through. It's amazing how quick these things do work. Poncho liners are the same ones. Same idea, I think. They are probably four by four inches across stitched with a padded down inside of there, reflective, nice and warm. And again, you can put them in a hammock. You can put it as a summer quilt if you want to, rather than take a, a sleeping bag, this and the other. So it's another added bonus. You could probably modify it to suit whatever you need, but again, lightweight, and this is brilliant. Okay, this was a no-name brand. Um, I don't know where it came from. Uh, it just came to me as a gift for Christmas, and I love it. I actually wear it in the house, as daft as that sounds. One of those old adages, put a sweater on, 
I'll go find a blanket. Super easy. Stuff it in. Have the draw cord. Have this blanket, this softy jacket, the softy pants, and you're pretty set up for a hike, just in case you get caught out. You get one of those uh, bright orange uh, survival bags that you can step into, you've got yourself an emergency shelter, just in case you find yourself overnight out in the, you know, the bad climate, the minus, the sub-zeros, okay? But uh, always think carrying this stuff is gonna help you. It's not gonna be a deficit, it's always an asset. These are guy wire ties. These look great. I'm always doing presset knots just to be light. They're made of aluminum. There's five of them in a pack. They weigh nothing. I don't have a scale, unfortunately, but they weigh nothing. I can take them off and I can put them on anything I like and they're super easy. Let's go and see them in action. All I've done is I've added a quick release knot to the small end. You just thread it through. And then a quick release knot. Like so. So it doesn't come off, cinch it down tight, and that's all you need to do. And from there, you thread the rope, create a loop, thread it through the big eyelet, and then sling it around the medium hole. And from here now, you have a sliding device you can just pull it tight and it's locked into place. I know this is an example, so it's not super tight and it's not the best string, it's not your camping string. But again, just pull it tight, you can grab the main loop itself and just pull it like so and you're cinching down release. So once you fed it through the main loop and over the small hole, you can then just adjust it. <coughs> Keep pulling until you've got the right tension that you need, or you can give it a bit of assist with the by pulling the rope so it's a bit of slack. Pulling it through. Superb. From there, slide it down take it apart. To disassemble, to disassemble, take the rope off when it's slack, pull it off, pull the quick release, you have your slide or your guy rope tensioner, and you take your string, put it in your pack, carry on. Absolutely fantastic. I think the press it knots for me are gone. I'm going to be using these things because it's going to make life so much quicker for me. Press it not, I have to keep rolling it around the rope, making sure I get it, and then tying it all up. Uh, that can be, it's good. It's great for emergency situations. You don't have a guy adjusters, but I think this is gonna be a piece of kit that I really like. And I'm gonna try it out more this year, and I'll see if I'm right. I came inside, it was too cold, and uh, no gloves. Well, not to do a lot of this stuff, but I've come inside because this stuff's a little bit small, and this is an Adwar um, survival kit. Survival kit in a can. And a lot of people like to think these, uh, you know, can I use them at any time? You can use them whenever you like. It's whatever situation you want to use them in. The best thing about these things is you leave them in the top of a pack, pocket, and you take it with you wherever you go. Because you just never know when you might need something like this or something within the kit. Uh, 
if you are going to use something from the kit, replace it. You know, it's super easy. It doesn't take you long when you get home. Um, as long as it's not a consumable that you can't get your hands on. And like I said, you don't have to panic when you're out and about and you get lost or stuck or there's a situation you just might need to borrow something from a kit like this. Go get it. Use it. It's there. It's not a showpiece for your kit and say, yeah, I got one of these things and you're never going to wear it, never going to use it, never going to find out its true potential. Let's have a look at what's in this kit. There is 13 pieces of equipment inside of this kit. You have the tin. The tin can be used for anything, collecting water, storing stuff, keeping stuff dry, of which everything that's inside of this kit is dry. It is bound by a piece of tape. Now, really, you could have this piece of tape as, if I undo it carefully, emergency tape. If you use it, Take it off carefully, stick it somewhere, okay, maybe you need a repair. There's, what about, 10 inches of insulation tape or repair wiring tape, okay. So this, pretty good. So I'm just going to leave that there, upside down. Then we open the tin up, we have the lid. Inside of the lid there is a seal, a small lightweight seal stop any dust and water getting in. That's a good thing. Uh, you can make your own tins, but sometimes they just don't have any sort of uh, insulation against weather. That's good. Instructions. Now, it tells you what's in the kit, and it gives you some first aid, and it also gives you a guide to maybe how to start fires or survival situations you might be in. So this guide is quite nice. It is a plasticky piece of paper. I have not tried to burn this, but I'm not sure if in an emergency you could use this as a burnable piece of paper. Self-evaluation form up here for first aid. Okay, so there's lots of neat things inside of this document that can help you. It'll also stop you from being bored if you're out there. You can read this over and over again. Cotton buds, um, look like one big piece, thin it out, and then from there you've got some fire starting material. The thinner it uses, uh, or the more fibrous that it is, the easier that it will spark. A pencil, pencil will work with the piece of paper. It does, as you can see there, it does write on there, so it's perfect. Write a note yourself, or you can fill in that medical plan. I'm going to come back to this in a minute. Let's see. Fishing hooks. Or fishing gear. Let's see what we've got here. We've got some fishing line. And then we've got some bevels. Looks like four. So this kit's a four piece of fishing kit. So four bevels. And you've got four weights that you can grip and four fairly big size hooks. And these are barbed hooks as well. Um, so what that means is that your fish won't come off. So, fishing gear. A whistle. <whistles> fairly loud. We have a clip for a shirt. And we have an eyelet there for a lanyard. Very simple, bright orange whistle. We also have a sewing kit. Again, trying to get into these bags. Obviously in an emergency, you would be able to just rip them open, but I don't want to. Oh, come on. There. Two safety pins, two buttons, one needle, and it looks like you get uh, two green, two white, and two black uh, threads. So that's kind of handy there. 
another packet. With more safety pins. Five safety pins right there. A button compass. Perfect for uh, if you do get lost or if you misplace or lose your other compass. So perfect little button compass. Uh, again, they're a pretty uh, cool idea. Most survival kits in a can come with a button compass, but that's an added bonus. There is also a tea candle. And I'm going to go over that in a little while. A nice roll of snare wire. Uh, perfect for making long snares or multiple snares. And uh, excellent. A chainsaw. Manual operation. Um, You've seen these before, um, plenty of reviews on these on the internet. Uh, they're on bevels so that these can be maneuvered without having to create any stress on the cable. But one thing that's kind of nice, these finger loops here are big enough that you can get your fingers in there, but also uh, they are a keychain design. So maybe you could uh, connect them together if there's something you need to do, or like I said earlier, use an s beaner and join them together just in case you need to do something piece of rope, um, make some loops. I think that the uh, sky is your oyster when it comes to stuff like this. And then, uh, you know, make up whatever you like. There is a pen knife, a little pocket knife on the knife itself, one blade, and there is a nail file or a file on the same edge. And on the other side, there is a pair of scissors so again if you needed to cut your fishing line something like that or even your uh, thread you can use that as well um, it's metal um, again it's just a little knife got a lanyard loop on there or a keychain for you to put that on there this is going to be in conjunction with these three items in a minute because you also get a fire steel a small little fire steel so if I just move this out of the way and use these in a second now as you can see in this kit there are no matches so you're dependent really on the fire steel now the nice thing about this is in this seal packet with your cotton ball cotton wool if you take a piece of this, string it out, put it into the base of the um, candle, I mean, you don't need much, string it out, thread it out so it becomes uh, the equivalent to vapors because you've got fibers in there. And then with the fire steel, ignite the cotton wool, which then would in turn ignite your candle wick. Now, how to do that, because there's nothing in here and there's no striker on here, you're gonna have to use your pen knife. The downside to this is it's only a small pen knife and you're gonna dull this blade. And if you were to try and strike it with the spring end going up, putting pressure on there may snap that knife shut on you, creating a first aid scenario, which you don't wanna do. What I might suggest is using this V area in the knife. So when you're pushing down on the ferrocium rod, you're pushing against the lock of the pen knife and you're not going to damage the knife from tip to heel or the blade. So obviously with these ferrocium rods, like every other ferrocium rod and everybody gets a bit worried about, when you strike a new one, they don't seem to work because they do have a little coating on them but you're gonna to have to scratch that coating off. And if I just put this in here, just in case we create sparks on the table, using that V area, I can create spark. And again, spark. So you can do that without damaging your knife. Again, using that little V area in there. So again, bit of cotton wool onto your candle, 
Ferrocene rod and knife, spark it, your cotton ball will catch fire, which will ignite your candle, which then you can put into your tinder block if you need to, or you can use it as a light in your shelter, your cave, your snow cave, whatever application you're using it in. So overall, what do I think? Give this a big thumbs up. I think it's a great bit of kit. Lots of, um, uh, there's a lot of stuff in here that you can use and uh, survive with and use to, to keep you alive. So thanks very much for watching this review. I'd like to also thank again camogroup.ca for supplying some of this gear to do a review with. Uh, I hope you go to their website and check it out and uh, get outside and enjoy the wilderness. Survive to be alive.